What is up, guys? We are finally back. I want to go ahead and apologize on the front end here for such a long hiatus without a video. It's been about a week, guys. Lots of stuff has been happening, though. We went out to L.A., flew out late last week to L.A., spent the whole weekend there, came back at the beginning of this week, flew back in on Monday afternoon. So had an incredible time, got to meet a, meet a ton of great people. Um, we had an opportunity to talk to the devs live. That was amazing. I've been working the past couple days on taking all of the footage I got and trimming it down, getting it all edited for you guys so that way we can condense down a ton, a ton of footage into a very small um, kind of serving of footage so that way we got all of the best parts for you guys. We're going to go through that. I did a little bit of um, vlogging, I guess. I know a lot of people kind of requested that. I also talked with the Warpath team, and they thought that would be a cool idea as well. So I did a little bit of vlogging in the hotel, um, showed you guys the hotel room, so you guys are going to see that coming up. And then it's going to transition right into the Q&A that we were able to have live with um, one of the developers from the Warpath team. And then after that, we're going to come back and we are going to talk about in a little bit more detail everything that the developers um, discussed in this live Q&A and what that could possibly mean for you. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Again, had a ton of fun. If you guys were out at the meetup, it was great to meet you guys. Um, absolutely had a blast. I'm really hoping we can do this again next year. So without that being said, or with that being said, guys, without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. What's going on guys? We are here in LA. We are at the Torrance Marriott in Redondo Beach. This is courtesy of Lilith. They helped hook me up with this room. Um, I got in yesterday, flew in um, from Northwest Arkansas where I live, flew into um, LAX. I got in about 5.15 yesterday evening, uh, checked into the hotel, uh, met a friend, went out to uh, for some drinks and some dinner, came back, crashed. Um, it is Saturday um, now, so we are kind of hitting on all cylinders now. Um, an exciting day planned. We're going to go out. I'm going to go out and meet uh, a friend again. We're going to go kind of explore, probably do a little shopping, hang out. Um, and then the Rise of Kingdoms player uh, meetup is going to be tonight, and then the Warpath player meetup is going to be tomorrow and i am actually going to be going to both so i'm going to go kind of be a fly on the wall at the rise of kingdoms player meetup um thanks to kevin for helping uh hook it hook me up with that invitation um and then of course i will be at the warpath player meetup tomorrow evening um my kind of plan for today i'm gonna go see the hollywood sign probably gonna go do a little shopping um also going to a pelicans game um, and a, it's pe the Pelicans versus the LA Clippers. So not a huge basketball guy, but I mean, we're in LA, right? So we got to do it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to see if I can't spin you guys around here. Um, let's see if I can do this. I'm going to try to break this up into a couple different videos. I'll spin it around. I'll show you guys the room. Super sweet setup. Um, hotel's been amazing. Um, been Ubering everywhere. So, so far so good. Having a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to flip this around and then kind of fuse these two different videos together doing kind of a, a room walk around so you guys can see exactly what the room looks like. Please in advance excuse my messy bed. I did sleep uh, really well last night but have not had uh, the bed made yet. So other than that, it's been really fun. So spin it around, give you guys a tour and we'll keep going. All right, so this is the entrance of the hotel room. You guys can see got some luggage there, got a full length mirror there, got a nice bed, a little artwork going on there on the wall. Got this cool, like bench um, slash sofa kind of thing right there. Kind of just been hanging out there. Got a little uh, full room service, got a little uh, food stand there. Got a nice long desk here. I can get some work done. Um, I've been able to do a little bit of work on my computer there. So that's been nice, nice flat screen here um, on the TV. Single king bed, which has been fantastic. Um, you guys can see I am on the 10th floor. I believe there maybe 15 floor, 16, 17 floor, something like that, but I am on the 10th floor, so I'm pretty high up. You guys can see the amazing view here um, of the mountains. Got some, got a pool down there, got a nice little courtyard area there with some 
uh, different games, things like that. So having a lot of fun out here, guys. This has been an absolutely amazing experience. Again, super, super thankful to Lilith for giving me this opportunity and, and helping make this trip possible. Um, I'm really looking forward to both the Rise of Kingdoms as well as the Warpath player meetup. We've got, I think, uh, I think Kevin said we've got like 30 people coming in for the Warpath um, event. So super excited about that. 30, 33 people. Um, so should have quite a few there. Um, spin you guys around one more time, give you guys a view. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, and we will keep you guys updated as we keep rolling through the weekend. Hello guys, Young here from Shanghai. This is Shanghai office. Welcome or to the World Pass Community Gallery event. <laughs> By chance, do you think that faces will get a life sometimes? Because at the moment, they're, they died too quickly. For lack of a better way. Yeah, yeah. Very good question. So, um, uh, Right now, right now we can we can feel that uh, for low power players the base is kind of weak. Yeah, um, we we are we're trying to we're trying to um, introduce some events for you guys to uh, upgrade your base, uh, your ward center, um, and we are we are we are making new officers. Um, actually, the one just releasing version seven point zero uh, seven point one. Uh, it will increase the, uh, I think, the damage resistance of your, uh, your your base. So so it may make your base much stronger than before. Yeah. Uh, and uh, before, uh, uh, other than that, other than that, uh, I think mm, what we what we want more what we want more to see is that um, you guys can fight outside of your base. So. Uh, the units versus units war is much interesting than the units versus base war in our opinion. So, see any naval units? Oh, that, very good question. Um, yeah. So we already have the ground force and the air force in war pass, and um, for our development team, uh, we really want to make uh, navy also integrated into our game. Um, I think. Uh, our plan right now is to start designing, start to design the Navy gameplay in the second half of this year, and hopefully uh, you guys can see it next year. So much like um, you're able to, uh, I guess, reset units, would you be able to reset yeah. officers? Since there's like there's like 15 officers that just yeah. got released, so I'm just wondering. I don't know. <laughs> At least for one, just, yeah, just maybe one time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm afraid there's no. <laughs> yeah, I'm, sorry. I'm not sure if you guys have played uh, Rise of Kingdom, so uh, we have a plan uh, in second half of this year to uh, to introduce a event that will be like the uh, Ark of Osiris event in Rise of Kingdom. So and also, in uh, second half of this year, we will also release the course. Uh, map of the Compass uh, uh, event. So right now, I think the re the real problem is that um, the the power gap between different alliances are, are are too big. Yeah. So we don't have enough alliances to make uh, very fair matchmaking to let you guys all enjoy the battle, the the fight, right? So. Um, we are we are we're trying to work out we're trying to work out uh some i would say a, a new system to 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 better uh to be, to to make your uh compass experience much better um i think it's called the star level cat cat system all right guys now that you have been able to see the q a with the warpath developer we are going to take a dive into every one of the things that was covered in that q a lots of great questions asked and we've got some um, answers to those questions and we're going to talk about them and firstly i kind of want to note that it was really cool to see the openness and the honesty and transparency um, from the development development team to us as a community. They acknowledge some of the faults that are going on in the game right now. They address them. They kind of laid out a blueprint on what some of the things they are going to be implementing and things that are they are going to be changing 
and future updates that are going to help solve some of these problems that really it seems like a large majority of the community has concerns with. So I really appreciated that. The honesty, the transparency went a long way. Um, and so that was just really, really cool to see. Um, but the first item on the list here is going to be base defense. You guys heard the base defense question and the new addition of the modern war technology is kind of a start to that. That definitely incorporated some base defensive buffs. You've also got the advanced city defense tech that's going to be able to help you in that realm as well. But it seems like they are making a big push on officers solving the base defense and the base durab durability problem and not so much technology. So that in itself is going to actually be pretty telling and it's going to be pretty telling for um, a couple of reasons. So in my opinion, one of the things that stand stands out to me about them gearing more base defensive stuff with officers and not tech is that is going to reduce the importance of your base tech. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't just do it, so please don't take it as that. But what I am saying is that it probably would be in your best interest to prioritize your advanced combat tech or this new modern war tech and then maybe sprinkle in some advanced city defensive tech if you haven't already completed it. Um, that way you guys are able to get some additional buffs because of course everything helps, but make sure if you guys are wanting to have some extra base durability that you guys are investing your universal statues into these new officers because that seems to be the key focus for the development team on how they're going to solve the base defense situation. Naval units are on the way. I know this is something that has actually been kind of quietly discussed for quite a while now in Warpath. I know many people have made suggestions about it um, in the official Warpath Discord server. I've seen those suggestions for you know quite a long period of time now. So the Navy conversation is a legit conversation. It was a great question. Obviously, this is a pretty historical um, and accurate game. It's not some made up sci-fi thing. So there is a lot of history components to this game. And Navy is one part of this time period in the military in general that is relevant. And we do not currently have Navy in the game. And they have confirmed that Navy is going to be coming. It sounds like it is going to be coming next year sometime. So we're still in quarter one of 2023. So we still have a ways to go through 2023 so no need to panic there's not going to be a huge update here that is going to be, be bringing navy this year it is going to be and it's going to be implemented sometime next year when we do not know yet but it sounds like it will be on its way at some point next year it also sounds like the navy aspect of the game is going to be geared specifically towards conquest events i could be totally wrong here i could be completely off the mark but that was my interpretation of what they were saying with the Navy, that it is going to be introduced. It is it is 100 percent um, something that they want to and plan to do, but that it is going to be geared around a conquest map that is designed and built to incorporate Navy in it. So that will actually be very, very exciting to see how they incorporate it, to see how it works and to see how it kind of flows with the base of the game that we have all come to know um, at this point. The officer reset is another great suggestion, and I will be honest with you guys, I feel like they're missing the mark here. They asked, um, somebody there at the meetup asked about an officer reset. You guys saw, they said, no, there isn't really any plans of that going to be happening, and I disagree with that. I think that it does need to happen. I think it needs to be a one-time, limited-time event, and whoever asked that question um, said the same exact thing, and I totally agreed. It needs to happen. I, I really think them not doing it is, is I don't really truthfully understand it. I think that it does, again, need to happen. I think we, if they would just allow us to reset, I mean, even one officer, that would be better than nothing, but one, two, maybe three max, period. All you get are the XP books back, the universal statues back, and you can only reset the officers that take universal statues so you can't reset 
Guardian of Truth since he is only going to be able to be acquired through purchasing the VIP packs. And then, of course, any of the exclusive lounge officers cannot be reset. But any officer that is able to be awakened and leveled up with universal statues, they should have a limited time event. Again, whether it's one officer, two, or even maybe three officers that you can choose, choose pick your choice of to reset. You get to reset them one time and that's it. You never get to do it again. I think that would really help kind of, you know, solve the officer issue because if you do it, heck, even if you just did one officer where everybody could reset one officer of their choosing, I think that would go a long way because there are so many officers in the game now um, and so many old irrelevant officers that even with the new skill system really aren't relevant. Um, and you can't really find a place for a whole lot of their skills that I, I just feel like it would go a long way for people and it would help. Um, it would still be, it, there would be no gap in strategy. There would be no gap in, um, you know, really anything that I can think. I just don't personally see a negative that comes with an officer reset. Again, a limited time, one time only event reset. Again, just even one officer is better than nothing, but I just think them continuing to not do that is is a mistake. I think that would be a good event to have, and I think it would go a long way um, with the entire community. The new PVE, or I'm sorry, PVP event that is going to be coming has been hinted at in the past with the roadmaps that they've released. And it's kind of been a conversation a lot of people in the community have had. It sounds like it's going to be very similar to the Ark of Osiris League in Rise of Kingdoms. For those of you that have played Rise of Kingdoms, I'm sure you'll be familiar with that. For those of you that have not played Rise of Kingdoms, of course, this is going to be a totally new dynamic. Um, I don't know and they did not... Um, specify if it is going to be an identical layout setup and rule set to the Ark of Osiris League and Rise of Kingdoms, or if they are going to put their own spin on it um, for Warpath. I anticipate they'll probably put their own spin on it, but it sounds like it will be very, very similar, if not probably close to identical. But we will, of course, have to wait and see. But it does sound like that is coming and it is going to be here in the next few months, sometime later this summer, which will be great. I know that'll be very exciting for a lot of players across the community because right now, after level three cities are open and everybody in a server is pretty much established, all you really have right now are level four conquest events, which don't get me wrong, are extremely fun, but there's nothing in between the two. It's you're either in an event or you're not. And when you're not, most servers are, are at peace and, and whatever, and you just kind of sit there and farm. So this will be another good aspect and dynamic to the game that will hopefully make the game more fun, more engaging, more enjoyable for players in between these conquest events. The fourth Conquest City sounds like it is going to be on the way as well later this year, sometime either later this summer or possibly into the fall or winter, but it does sound like we are going to get a fourth level four Conquest City that is going to unlock sometime this year. We currently have Moscow, San Francisco, and Cairo, which Cairo is still fairly new, but we've got the three and it sounds like the fourth is going to be on the way. We do not know currently which city is going to be the fourth to unlock, but the good news is we can all look forward to the fact that we will be getting a new map heading our way at some point later this year. The final big takeaway from the live Q&A at the player meetup in Los Angeles is going to be the new matchmaking and the new star unit cap, guys. This is going to be a really, really positive thing, I think. So they, and again, I really appreciated the honesty and the transparency that they were willing to admit and own up to the fact that they understand the matchmaking in the game right now is not great. We all know it's not great. Sometimes there are battlefields that are structured pretty well, but a lot of times there are battlefields that are structured really poorly and there's huge power gaps and it's just not fun for either side and they they definitely need to improve it and it sounds like they are working on a solution for that which is going to be great um the big 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 touch point here is going to be the unit star cap guys this is going to basically limit the level of troop you can have going into conquest city so how this is going to help is because there are a lot of big whales that like to go into silver or like to go into gold. And gold's more competitive now 
Um, in the past, there wasn't a lot of competitive alliances in gold, but there is a lot more competitive alliances in gold, but especially silver and in some cases in gold, there's these huge massive whales that go there and they just basically like to bully and beat up on the small and weak and it makes it really not fun for everybody else. It's very discouraging and they like to basically assert their dominance in a very um, you know, lopsided battlefield instead of going and competing where they probably should, which is high gold or epic and competing with similar powered players. They like to go beat up on the weak players. And again, that's no fun for those weak players and it takes away the enjoyment and the, the overall fun of the game completely out for those, those smaller players that are just there to hang out with their friends, um, and enjoy the game and play occasionally whenever they can, right? Generally speaking, silver alliances aren't that, you know, um, devoted to the game, which is not a bad thing at all. That's exactly what it's there for. It's there for people that, you know, play maybe an hour or a couple hours a day or whatever it may be for them. They just hop on, enjoy talking to their friends, fighting a little bit, and then going to do the, whatever else they need to do with their time. Um, and so when you can't do that because you've got a 300 million power base and silver bearing down on you, that's very boring, um, for them. And it just, again, it just, it's, it's really not necessary. And so they are fixing it. So even if you're a 300 million base, if you're in silver, the highest unit level you're going to be able to get is going to be like an 8.1. Now that's not confirmed. There's not like a confirmation on what cap, uh, or what star level cap is going to be at what tier of battleground. But I'm just using that as an example. So if you're in silver, the cap may be an 8.1 unit. So it doesn't matter if you can make a 9.2, you're not going to be able to use anything over an 8.1. And then if you're in gold, it may be like a 9.1. He kind of mentioned that it may not be a 9.1. It may be a nine star, but 9.1 is probably fair. It's probably middle of the road. Um, and then, of course, at the epic level, it's still, you know, use whatever you want or whatever you have. And, you know good luck kind of thing, which is how it should be. If you want to, if you want to be the best, you've got to compete with the best and you've got to go out there and, and make the most of it. And I, I think that's exactly how it should be. So I'm really looking forward to that star, uh, level unit cap. I think that should make the game more enjoyable at every tier of battleground that you're going to be a part of again, whether silver, gold or Epic, I think it'll smooth it out a lot. And so if those stronger players that are going to bully weaker players, don't like the idea of not being able to use their 9.2 units. Well, guess what? Now you can go play in gold or you can go play in Epic. Those are your options. You can either get on a, on a level playing field or you can just not play, period. So I think that's going to be really good for the community as a whole, guys. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and round this video up. I don't want to take up too much of your guys' time, but this this LA meetup was absolutely incredible. I would like to thank the entire Warpath team for for not only inviting me out, but for hosting the event in general. They had they did an amazing job. It was a beautiful venue that we were able to um, have this event at. They gave away tons of amazing prizes. Everybody walked out of there with something, so that was amazing to see. We got the Q&A. We all got to talk and hang out. So it really was incredible, guys. Again, I just want to thank everybody that came out, showed their support for the entire Warpath game and community, um, got to hang out with all of you. So really enjoyed meeting everybody that I was able to meet and interact with there at the meetup as well. Hopefully, we'll see you guys at the next one if there is a next one. Um, so I, I'm pretty hopeful of that because this one did go really, really well. So And Kevin was kind of the, the head of the whole... Warpath um, uh, meetup. He was there helping the Rise of Kingdoms team, and then Kevin and his team were there also um, kind of heading up the Warpath meetup. So Kevin did an amazing job. Shout out to you, Kevin. Um, again, great to meet everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are looking forward to some of the upcoming updates and changes and improvements to the game. Let me know what you guys think overall about these, these points that were talked about here. Um, let me know if you agree, disagree, give me your thoughts and opinions as well. And then as always, guys, if you want to discuss um, anything else, the link to our community Discord is going to be in the description of the video below. If you do have access to Discord, click the link. You'll jump right into the server. Absolutely, everybody is welcome. We would love to have you come be a part of that with us. And with that being said, guys, I appreciate it, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.